Since 2003, worldwide concern over Iran's nuclear program has increased as Iran and the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, spar over investigation and details of Iran's program. Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khomeini has repeatedly denied Iran is building a bomb and says weapons of mass destruction are forbidden under Islam. Timeline slash U. 1957, the United States signs a civil nuclear cooperation agreement with Iran. 1958, Iran joins the International Atomic Energy Agency. 1967, the Tehran Nuclear Research Center which includes a small reactor supplied by the United States, opens. 1968, Iran signs the Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty. Mid-1970s, with U.S. backing, Iran begins developing a nuclear power program. 1979, Iran's Islamic Revolution ends Western involvement in the country's nuclear program. December 1984, with the aid of China, Iran opens a nuclear research center in Isfahan. February 23, 1998, the United States announces concerns that Iran's nuclear energy program could lead to the development of nuclear weapons. March 14, 2000, U.S. President Bill Clinton A signs a law that allows sanctions against people and organizations that provide aid to Iran's nuclear program. February 21, 2003, IAEA Director General Mohammad El Baradi visits Iran to survey its nuclear facilities and to encourage Iran to sign a protocol allowing IAEA inspectors greater and faster access to nuclear sites. Iran declines to sign the protocol. El Baradi says he must accept Iran's statement that its nuclear program is for producing power and not weapons, despite claims of the United States to the contrary. June 19, 2003, the IAEA issues a report saying that Iran appeared to be in compliance with the Nonproliferation Treaty, but that it needed to be more open about its activities. August 2003, the IAEA announces that its inspectors in Iran have found traces of highly enriched uranium at the Natanz Uranium Enrichment Plant. Iran claims the amounts are contamination from equipment bought from other countries. Iran agrees to sign a protocol of the Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty that allows for unannounced visits to their nuclear facilities and signs it on December 18, 2003. October 2003, the foreign ministers of Britain, France and Germany visit Tehran, and all parties agree upon measures Iran will take to settle all outstanding issues with the IAEA. Under obligation to the IAEA, Iran releases a dossier on its nuclear activities. However, the report does not contain information on where Iran acquired components for centrifuges used to enrich uranium, a fact the IAEA considers important in determining whether the uranium is to be enriched for weapons. November 2003, Iran agrees to halt uranium enrichment as a confidence-building measure and accepts IAEA verification of suspension. December 2003, Iran signs the additional protocol A to the Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty with the IAEA voluntarily agreeing to broader inspections of its nuclear facilities. February 2004, A.Q. Khan, father of Pakistan's nuclear weapons program, admits to having provided Iran and other countries with uranium enrichment equipment. June 1, 2004, the IAEA states they have found traces of uranium that exceed the amount used for general energy production. Iran admits that it is importing parts for advanced centrifuges that can be used to enrich uranium, but is using the parts to generate electricity. July 31, 2004, Iran states that it has resumed production on centrifuge parts used for enriching uranium, but not enrichment activities. August 8, 2005, Iran restarts uranium conversion, a step on the way to enrichment, at a nuclear facility, saying it is for peaceful purposes only, and flatly rejects a European offer aimed at ensuring the nation does not seek nuclear weapons. August 9, 2005, Iran removes the IAEA seals from its Isfahan nuclear processing facility, opening the uranium conversion plant for full operation. 
IAEA spokesman Mark Gwozdecki states that the plant is fully monitored by the IAEA and is not a uranium enrichment plant. September 11, 2005, Iran's new foreign minister, Manushur Mataki, says the country won't suspend activities at its Isfahan uranium conversion facility and it plans to seek bids for the construction of two more nuclear plants. January 10, 2006, Iran resumes research at its Natanz uranium enrichment plant, arguing that doing so is within the terms of an agreement with the IAEA. January 12, 2006, foreign ministers of the EU3, Great Britain, France, Germany, recommend Iran's referral to the United Nations Security Council over its nuclear program. January 13, 2006, Iran's foreign minister, Manushur Mataki, states that if Iran is referred, its government under law will be forced to stop some of its cooperation with the IAEA, including random inspections. February 4, 2006, President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad A orders Iran to end its cooperation with the IAEA. April 11, 2006, Hashimi Rafsanjani, Iran's former president, states that Iran has increased the number of functioning centrifuges in its nuclear facilities in Natanz and has produced enriched uranium from them. August 31, 2006, the IAEA issues a report on Iran saying the Islamic Republic has not suspended its enrichment activities despite this day's deadline to do so. Iran can possibly face economic sanctions. December 23, 2006, the UN Security Council votes unanimously to impose sanctions against Iran for failing to suspend its nuclear program. February 22, 2007, the IAEA issues a statement saying that Iran has not complied with the UN Security Council's call for a freeze of all nuclear activity. Instead, Iran has expanded its uranium enrichment program. March 24, 2007, the UN adopts Resolution 1747 which toughens sanctions against Iran. The sanctions include the freezing of assets of 28 individuals and organizations involved in Iran's nuclear and missile programs. About a third of those are linked to the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, an elite military corps. May 23, 2007, the IAEA delivers its latest report to the United Nations on Iran's nuclear activities. The report states that not only has Iran failed to end its uranium enrichment program but has in fact expanded their activity. June 21, 2007, Iran's Interior Minister Mustafa Pormohamadi claims, now we have 3,000 centrifuges and have in our warehouses 100 kilograms of enriched uranium, we also have more than 150 tons of raw materials for producing uranium gas. December 2007, a U.S. intelligence report finds that Iran abandoned a nuclear weapons program in 2003. February 20, 2009, the Institute for Science and International Security, ISIS, reports that Iranian scientists have reached nuclear weapons breakout capability. The report concludes Iran does not yet have a nuclear weapon but does have enough low enriched uranium for a single nuclear weapon. An official at the IAEA cautions about drawing such conclusions. The IAEA says Iran's stock of low enriched uranium would have to be turned into highly enriched uranium, HU, to become weapons grade material. February 25, 2009, Iran runs tests at its Boucher nuclear power plant using dummy fuel rods, loaded with lead in place of enriched uranium to simulate nuclear fuel. A news release distributed to reporters at the scene states the test measured the pressure, temperature and flow rate of the facility to make sure they were at appropriate levels. Officials say the next test will use enriched uranium, but it's not clear when the test will be held or when the facility will be fully operational. September 21, 2009, in a letter to the IAEA, Iran reveals the existence of a second nuclear facility. It is located underground at a military base, near the city of Qom. October 25, 2009, IAEA inspectors make their first visit to Iran's newly disclosed nuclear facility near Qom. February 18, 2010, in a statement, 
The IAEA reports that it believes Iran may be working in secret to develop a nuclear warhead for a missile. August 21, 2010, Iran begins fueling its first nuclear energy plant, in the city of Bushehr. December 5, 2010, Ali Akbar Salehi, Iran's atomic chief and acting foreign minister, announces that Iran's nuclear program is self-sufficient and that Iran has begun producing yellow cake, an intermediate stage in processing uranium. January 8, 2011, Ali Akbar Salehi reports that Iran can now create its own nuclear fuel plates and rods. September 4, 2011, Iran announces that its Bushehr nuclear power plant joined the electric grid September 3, making it the first Middle Eastern country to produce commercial electricity from atomic reactors. September 5, 2011, in response to Iran's nuclear chief stating that Iran will give the IAEA full supervision of its nuclear program for five years if UN sanctions are lifted, the European Union says that Iran must first comply with international obligations. November 8, 2011, the IAEA releases a report saying that it has serious concerns and credible information that Iran may be developing nuclear weapons. January 9, 2012, the IAEA confirms that uranium enrichment has begun at the Fordno nuclear facility in the Qom province in northern Iran. January 23, 2012, the European Union announces it will ban the import of Iranian crude oil and petroleum products. January 29, 2012, a six-member delegation from the IAEA arrives in Tehran for a three-day visit shortly after the EU imposes new sanctions aimed at cutting off funding to the nuclear program. January 31, 2012, in Senate testimony James Clapper, Director of National Intelligence, says there's no evidence Iran is building a nuclear bomb. CIA Director David Petrius agrees. February 15, 2012, Iran loads the first domestically produced nuclear fuel rods into the Tehran research reactor. February 21, 2012, after two days of talks in Iran about the country's nuclear program, the IAEA expresses disappointment that no progress was made and that their request to visit the Parchin military base was denied. March 28, 2012, discussions regarding Iran's nuclear future stall. April 14, 2012, talks resume between Iran and six world powers over Iranian nuclear ambitions in Istanbul, Turkey. May 25, 2012, an IAEA report finds that environmental samples taken at the Fordo fuel enrichment plant near the city of Qom have enrichment levels of up to 27 percent, higher than the previous level of 20 percent. June 18-19, 2012, a meeting is held between Iran and the P5 plus 1, United States, France, Russia, China, Great Britain, and Germany, in Moscow. No agreement is reached. June 28, 2012, Saeed Jalili writes to European Union Foreign Policy Chief Catherine Ashton warning world powers to avoid unconstructive measures such as the oil embargo that's about to go into effect and that was agreed upon by the EU in January. July 1, 2012, a full embargo of Iranian oil from the EU takes effect. August 30, 2012, a UN report finds that Iran has stepped up its production of high-grade enriched uranium and has relandscaped Parchin, one of its military bases, in an apparent effort to hamper a UN inquiry into the country's nuclear program. September 24, 2013, at a speech at the UN General Assembly, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani says nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction have no place in Iran's security and defense doctrine, and contradict our fundamental religious and ethical convictions. October 16, 2013, the latest discussions between Iran and the six world powers center on a proposal put forth by Iran to recognize the peaceful nature of its nuclear energy pursuits. The meeting is described as substantive and forward-looking. November 24, 2013, six world powers and Iran reach an agreement over Iran's nuclear program.
A The deal calls on Iran to limit its nuclear activities in return for lighter sanctions. January 12, 2014, it is announced that Iran will begin eliminating some of its uranium stockpile on January 20. January 20, 2014, Iran's nuclear spokesman Biraz Kamalvandi tells state-run news agency Erna that Iran has started suspending high levels of uranium enrichment. January 20, 2014, the European Union announces that it has suspended certain sanctions against Iran for six months. February 20, 2014, following talks in Vienna, EU foreign policy chief Catherine Ashton and Iranian foreign minister Mohammad Javad Zarif announced that a deal on the framework for comprehensive negotiations over Tehran's nuclear program has been reached. November 24, 2014, the deadline for a final nuclear agreement between Iran and the UN Security Council's P5 plus 1 countries, the United States, Russia, China, France, Britain, and Germany, has been set for July 1, 2015. April 2, 2015, negotiators from Iran, the United States, China, Germany, France, Britain, and Russia reach a framework for an agreement on Iran's nuclear capabilities, which includes reducing its stockpile of low-enriched uranium by 98%. The deadline for the complete agreement is July 1. April 9, 2015, Iranian President Rouhani announces that Iran will only sign a final nuclear agreement if economic sanctions are lifted on the first day of implementation. July 14, 2015, a deal is reached on Iran's nuclear program. A the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, JCPOA, reduces the number of Iranian centrifuges by two-thirds. It places bans on enrichment at key facilities, and limits uranium research and development to the Nadens facility. July 20, 2015, the UN Security Council endorses the nuclear deal. January 16, 2016, IAEA Director General Yuki Yamamano says Iran has completed all the necessary steps agreed under the nuclear deal, and that all participants can begin implementing the JCPOA. March 8-9, 2016, Iran test fires two Qadra ballistic missiles during a large-scale military drill, according to Iran's state-run press TV. U.S. officials say that the tests do not violate the nuclear agreement, JCPOA, but are very likely in breach of a U.N. resolution calling on Iran not to undertake ballistic missile activity. January 29, 2017, Iran launches a medium-range ballistic missile slash A, its first missile test since Donald Trump became U.S. president, but the test fails, according to information given to News Total by a U.S. defense official. National Security Advisor Michael Flynn says the United States has put Iran on notice. February 3, 2017, in reaction to the January 29th missile test, the U.S. Treasury Department says it is applying sanctions on 25 individuals and companies connected to Iran's ballistic missile program and those providing support to Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps' QOD's force. National Security Advisor Flynn says the tests were in defiance of a UN Security Council resolution that bars Iran from taking steps on a ballistic missile program capable of launching nuclear weapons. September 20, 2017, Iranian President Rouhani asserts that it will be a great pity if this agreement were destroyed by rogue newcomers to the world of politics, in a clear reference to US President Trump's address to the UN General Assembly on September 19 where he offered scathing criticism of both Iran and the 2015 International Agreement. October 13, 2017, U.S. President Trump decertifies Iran's compliance with the nuclear agreement a declaring that the Obama-era pact was not in U.S. interests and unveils a tough new policy toward the Islamic Republic. The move stops short of completely scrapping the agreement, instead kicking it to Congress, who then has 60 days to determine a path forward. Congress allows the 60-day deadline to pass without action. January 12, 2018, U.S. President Trump agrees to waive key nuclear-related sanctions against Iran as part of the 2015 deal, but delivers a stark ultimatum to European allies, 
fix the deal's disastrous flaws, or the United States will withdraw. Slash a Trump couples his waiver announcement with new sanctions on 14 Iranian individuals and entities that have committed human rights abuses or supported Iran's ballistic missile programs, which are outside the scope of the nuclear deal. The most prominent of the targets in the latest sanctions is Ayatollah Sadek Amali Larajani, the head of Iran's judicial system.